Hi everyone, it's Tarnished Treasures. I'm cooking some tuna steaks. I bought these the other day at Aldi and the two pieces were like $5.35. It was so inexpensive. I thought $5 a piece was a good deal. These were like $2.50. So I cooked some the other day and now I'm cooking some more up for some type of casserole that I'm gonna put together. I'm trying to do something similar to what my dad would do on the weekends, but make it low carb. Um, but I wanted to pre-cook the tuna to begin. Rice cauliflower, big pieces of broccoli, the cooked tuna, raw scallops, we have cheddar cheese. Um, I would have put sour cream, but I guess I'm out. So I did cream of mushroom, salt, pepper, garlic powder, oregano. I'm gonna add thyme. I did a tablespoon of this since I didn't have sour cream. So I want to have some type of little tang. A little bit of Parmesan cheese sprinkled in. Out of the oven, nice and hot. I taste it. I think it tastes really good. And I squeezed some fresh lemon on top. I think a lot of water came from the scallops and the broccoli. So I just poured a little bit out into the sink. If I had one of those... Um, basters. I could have just used that in the corners to soak up some of the water, but I like the flavor. Might not look that appetizing in the bowl, but here on top where it's a little crispy on the broccoli, I like it. I've been waiting all week to have a fire and uh, just going to get cozy and comfortable tonight. It's only 530. My husband is outside working on some stuff and he's having a fire outside. Um, whenever I have a fire inside, I make sure that I turn the diffuser on just to get some moisture in the air since the fire will definitely dry things out. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit, but I guess better than nothing. Before I get settled in for the night, I wanted to share with you what I got at the clay supply store. I had to go and get clay for the students. And while I was there, I walked around to see if there was anything I'd like to try for myself. Um, and I spent over $90. The most expensive thing was this. It was $30 and it's gold, um, bright gold. And it's to, I mean, give the effect of gold. If you've ever gotten a mug and it has a little gold accents. I've been nervous to try it, but the girl said, you just fire your things and make sure they're glazed. And then you fire this at a very low temperature and that it doesn't smell so good when you're painting it. But once it's dry, it's fine. So I thought, all right, this will be the year of trying new things. I got the glass engraver, I'm gonna finally add some real gold. I say real gold, I don't know if it's real gold, but it looks like real gold, not like a dark yellow. I did get this one called Golden Halo. I picked this one up first and I don't think it was more than $20. So I thought it was a pretty good deal for this and um, it gave a nice, golden metallic look. So that could be fun, um, especially to cover air, big areas. Like I can cover a lot more with that than I can with that. This one is a jungle gems glaze. So you can see the little like specks in there are larger pieces of, I'll say glass, so to speak. And um, <clears throat> you'll get like a base color of the glaze and then little gems in there that burst. And this was a green that also looked like it had like some gold or just the yellow against the green looked golden. So I thought that could be fun. This um, French dimension, they had black and white and it was something that you put on before or after firing and it made it uh, more three dimensional. So that could be really fun if you were making um, cakes or cookies like to look realistic, which we actually did in class, but then to add other details to your pieces. I got a silver rub and buff and it was only $3.50. I feel like that's cheaper than what I paid when I got the gold on Amazon. If they had gold, I would have gotten that as well, but they didn't. And I think I'm gonna use this on my um, Quoth the Raven engraving. So I'm probably gonna do that now. I know I said I'd wait, but I think I'll do it. And then I picked up two mason stains. Um, you can mix these into clay. And that's what I did when I shared the, that ribbon candy um, that I made where I basically kneaded it into clay. So I made a colored clay and uh, this one's a dark red. I didn't have dark red. You can see it's kind of expensive, but that will go a very long way. You can mix it with something and use it as a watercolor 
underglaze for your pieces or you can mix it into your clay and make colored clay. So I've done both. My friend has done both too. And then this one is called Mazarine Blue and they had samples there and mixed into the clay, I mean, it was just the most gorgeous blue. Not this at all, like a dark, I'm going to say Prussian blue, just beautiful. Um, so maybe I'll be making some colored clay soon. You take a little bit of the rub and buff, spread it over your glass, and then wipe and buff it off. This might seem like a lot of product, and it was. <laughs> Since it was a new container, when I punctured it for it to come out, it's under pressure and it shoots out. It happens with glue too. I hate it when that happens. So I didn't need that much, but I just worked for an extra minute or two. It all came off. It might not look very different here. And honestly, it was late at night. So I didn't see, you know, that much of a difference from the engraving to the silver. But I think when the sun is out, it'll sparkle a little bit. For dinner, I put a pork roast in the crock pot with some taco seasoning yellow rice for the kids, specifically my daughter. She really wanted it. Sauteed some multicolored peppers in some more taco seasoning. And then I've got all the typical toppings for tacos or fajitas. So oh, it's Monday, it's five o'clock. Um, kids and I have like had like an after school snack, so we're all good for a while. And I got a workout in before I even came home, which was nice. So I already had a shower. I just need to blow dry my hair and um, then do whatever I want for the rest of the night. The kids had the day off and I think that my mom um, <laughs> did a thousand things with them. So they're just like, I think, cocked out right now which is awesome. My mom also got me this. I saw it online at a consignment shop and she picked it up. It's a little Fenton pitcher. I didn't realize it was a pitcher. I thought it was a vase, but I really like that it's a pitcher. And uh, it says Fenton on the bottom. Pitchers are nice because you can use them to water things. It just comes right on out. Um, and it has little hearts. So I collect cranberry glass, so that is such a cool piece. And uh, I picked up those heart earrings to finish this area off, and I decided to give the earrings to my daughter. They were nice. They were sterling silver. They were $4. So she wore them to church yesterday, and uh, yeah, I didn't want to take them apart. So now I still need to find something to finish that. So I'm going to blow dry my hair before it gets too dry, and then probably get into collaging and possibly trying to finish this. I, I don't have anything new. But I don't know, maybe maybe something will come to me. Maybe I'll take something apart or combine something different. Piece like this could be really perfect for creating like an, an edge of the tree that points out. So I will save that. And I have the missing rhinestone for it. I finished my Christmas tree. And this one has a slight baby theme to it. I've got this pin that says Bebe. I've got a little baby booty here and at the bottom a teddy bear. So that's drying and then I'll have to give it a little um, brush with the lint roller. This is velvet and this frame is old so it's just picking up everything. And now that that's finished I think I'm going to pull some things out for Valentine's Day. I just have a few decorations to put here and there but my mom did get me this and it is perfect for Valentine's Day just put a few things in here for Valentine's Day. I used to save my wedding decorations for June and a sweet and simple home here on YouTube. She would put them out for Valentine's Day and I really liked that idea. So I switched it up. So at the top, I just have this photo in this acrylic holder that I got at a flea market for a dollar. And then down here, the vase my mom got me with just some old ephemera on photos. This is a vintage scrap and it, somebody wrote Walter on it. And over here, my friend gave me this. It is a wedding invitation from 1886 and it's a trifold. This part has come unattached. And on both sides, it has the silk with a little envelope and in it has the name of the bride and groom. So I, my guess is that when you went to the wedding, you would, I guess, hand the usher the card from the side of the family you were with to be seated. That's 
what what I'm thinking. I don't know. And then I just put a little topper in front to kind of hide where that was broken. This wedding assemblage sculpture, a um, little bride and groom figurine, and they were part of a larger piece. So I actually took them off and added them to salt and pepper shakers that I filled with pearls and glass beads. We've got a little dog ring bearer. <laughs> And another part of a cake topper behind that little pearl but, uh, pin that says wife. This is actually a little ring holder. And then this piece here, it was like a jabot that I got at the antique store for $2 and it just works perfectly as this really long train. Some more cute figurines. And that's the nail polish that I wore for my wedding. and. I don't know, it's kind of thick now, but I didn't want to get rid of it. So I keep it in display to Valentine's Day. Then some little souvenirs for my grandparents' wedding that were mirrors. My mom gave those to me. So I've got other things too, but you know, I don't always have to put everything out. But when I store it, you know, I, I have it all together so I know where to find it when I want it. So I've got some things for the kids' rooms. I'll go up and do that later. I actually have to put their Christmas trees away first in their rooms. It's nice to have a touch of color in those cabinets as well since Christmas has been down for a while. I kind of have it framed right in the middle. I know it's hard with the reflection. Right on display in the middle of that panel there, that nice pink vase. So these three trees have to be put away. Um, I mean, I guess it's still January and Christmas wasn't quite a month ago. I actually think they look very wintry. Here's a sculpture that I did after Christmas last year. And um, it's got a like pale medium pink it's not coming across on the camera but I really like that dusty rose color and it's just a great way to use up some of my decorations that I've collected glitter on the top I really like that side too. And that's like a little toy that my daughter had, a little piece of jewelry. And um, this was from Trisha's estate. It was one of the first things I actually bought at a yard sale from her. Thanks for watching everyone. And I will see you in another video. Bye.